Are we here? There we go, we should be here. Let's see if anything happens. Good, we should be live and all should be well. Let me just double check that no funny business is going on. Nope, looks all fine. I guess you'll tell me if anything happens. And yeah, it's been a while. Mostly because I didn't really have anything to show you this update. I've just been grinding a lot of top tier cruisers and all. Pretty bland after a couple of hours. Oh god, oh, come on. Connection, please. No oh boy. Well, let's just hope that my connection stays stable for the entire stream. And yes, hello and uh, thank you. I am well, although I did have one of my Wisdom Thief extracted yesterday, yesterday, so that's a bit sore still, but I'll manage. As long as my internet connection manages as well. Green's frozen, that's normal because I've all tabbed. And yeah. Another reason I'm back in stream, I should actually check my YouTube page just to be sure. It is not receiving anything. Is that true? That's just one second. Gonna double check if everything's actually running fine. Yeah, it is. Good. And my radio radiator keeps popping as well. But yes, everything's fine. Let's actually get into some games, shall we? As you can see, I've already got it on Ayanami. Plan is to do some of the other Japanese Four Threes and some other destroyers. Depends on what I feel like, really. So yeah, let's just jump straight into it. And keep a very close eye on my connection. Actually, yeah, it did. So that's how hard is my next one I was working towards. Vijikuma having some points in it as well. Alrighty. I am slightly annoyed though, however. I did I ordered myself some uh, like a display pad to just help me control my streams and all that stuff a bit better. And I ordered it on the 1st. It's currently the 11th and I still haven't gotten it. I'm slightly annoyed. But oh well. Probably get it next week anyways. Hmm, we've got... 25 is actually 4-3 as well. Yeah, that's 3-3, three, 3-7. Three, three, well, down to it by the looks of it. And with that, I am tempted to go to B. Although my torpedoes would do better at C, I guess. They'll do well enough at B as well. Do we have any coastals? Quite a few. We don't have any player coastals. 
this shield. Yeah, no, we don't have any player coastals at the moment, so I might actually be able to capture B. Yes, boat. That's been way too long since I streamed boat. But with um, death season wrapping up as well, I am certainly going to keep my streams up for as much as possible. And I'm, I'm, yeah, Helena's and, and Moffat's are still the plague and the zombies are still there. I th genuinely, I, I, I kind of, I am excited for a French Navy no matter when we would get it, because I just want the new tree to dive into. Because at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm for every blue water tree I'd, I'm at a rank five for research. And that's just a bit, uh, a bit bland after a while. Like for six O cruises, you're surprised how many open water maps you get in them. Just bland after a while, especially with all these zombies. Although, um, I have been having some very, very fun games with more human players in them, and more like normal, like Gaijin bots. And those those are a nice change of pace. Like especially when I play during the early morning my time. You don't have that many people online, and then you run into more like actual human players. That's and not so, not as many som zombies, surprisingly. That's a very nice. Also, the human on B, so I'm gonna put my gunners on all targets. Just in case. Well, it's either a human or it's a bot. Could be a bot. Target front. All broken. It is kind of redundant that I go for these u these uh, new camos on the stores because I usually run user camos anyways. But it's still nice to have. Because you can still like have an in-game camo and a user camo over top of it. Uh, that's a player grey fox. There's also another player behind me, I think, I'm not sure. There he goes. That is not a player that's hot. Fine. I don't think the Grey Fox on Shapiris, no, they would already hit me if he hit. Going. Yeah, this map, if you're playing like 4 3 and I fall down there, is it's fun. I like, I like fighting over B in the stores. Even in the stores that aren't really the best at it. Yeah, I saw that, Sam. I did see you do that. I wish I was a CC dammit, then I could do the same thing for my Japanese camos. But I need to upload more, I really do. I am working on my next video, the, the, like the review of the German Destroyers is, is next up. Crypt is finished, I've even recorded all the voiceovers for it. I just need to do the game, well, the vehicle footage. And then editing. That's like two days worth of work. If I'm really lazy. If I can get myself started, I could even just do it today. Uh, tomorrow. Today. It's already way too late today. I'll try and get it done tomorrow. I know a polar review is, is something that should happen, but I don't want to review premiums. Because I do not have every single premium. There is, however, and this is going to already be a spoiler for the future, right? I am at some point going to do a review of Belfast using actual pictures of the Belfast. For that to happen, I actually have to go to London first. But that is definitely something I plan to do. 
because me and my dad are planning to go to London at some point, visit a few museums. And I've heard good things about visiting Belfast. Oh, over there, Clemson. Splash the front gun. Bow in is just to help him. Torpedoes. Which are incredibly irregular at the moment. Let's just launch a spread. None of them, of course, from the same torpedo launcher. I think we should just charge this Clemson. Boat. Come on, Gunter, let's rotate. Ball break, yep. Yep, I'm going to torpedo charge this Clemson. If he doesn't get... Surely the Clemson can fight up another three, right? Surely. Hello, chicken. I'm just fine. Just been a bit inactive, to my shame. Ooh. That is a... one of the... That is one of the camos for a British destroyer, isn't it? Is it a free one? I'm not sure. Alas has missed his torpedoes. I have been to Portsmouth in the past. Um, it is, I was a bit too young to really appreciate Portsmouth though back then. Aircraft up, so let's keep the gunners on anti-aircraft. I do not want you to run anywhere because the is about to hit. There we go, big boons. That was an AI marker? It was. Uh, plane is over there, let's load the TF. I'm not really sure, like, me and my dad are planning a trip just to England, but I don't know for how long we want to be there. I think it's multiple days, we might actually go to Portsmouth as well, if we really want to. But I'd love to just go to a few of those famous English museums, oh boy. Torpedoes in the water, torpedoes in the water. Aircraft shot down from the 40 mil. Okay. Torpe Ooh, can the AI eat him? No, there's a player. Can he eat him? He can eat him. I think that one's past, nope. Oh, one did slip past. Keep turning, keep turning. He is going to run aground. But I'm gonna launch them right there. I have torpedoes to spare anyways. But he will reserve first, won't he? Um, get the engines, because I've run... I have one torpedo left. And I think those will hit you. Yep, there we go. Ooh, flooding, flooding, flooding. Ooh, that was dangerous. Somehow I managed to get it under control. Ooh. Okay, the thing is that thing has torpedoes, rotate those gun turrets. If at all possible. Is a, is a torpedo, that is a torpedo track? Yes, I saw that. God damn it, that's a miss. I do still have a depth charge on the ship as well, so if he plans to just go beside me, I can depth charge him. I took out as a bridge, that's why he's ramming me. And there we go, hole broke him. Yeah, I... I kind of hope they'll do the American Voices next update as well. Who knows? 
I need to repair my engine. Oh, they're capturing B behind me. Time to turn around. B is 100% my responsibility. Seems like it's an MBK 161. I'm not sure if my high explosive can deal with that, but we'll see. Now, I kind of want to ram him and just flip him over and see if that kill him. Because I don't necessarily care about winning or losing anyways, I just... Oh well, never mind, one shot it is. I just need naval damage for the ammos. over there. Don't think there's an immediate threat. So, oh well. Yeah, because somebody made a, a fake leak list literally on day one of the death vlogs, including two French battleships. Everybody's now raving about friendship. And there was a death Q&A wasn't there saying watch the news for French ships. So we can only hope. I'm just hoping they'll, they'll actually add some more big stuff for naval. Because the last update wasn't bad. It didn't really add anything like new top tier wise. I think the biggest ship we got last update was the Abruzzi. And well, the Miyoko. I keep forgetting about Miyoko. Yeah, they, they did word it like it, it was going to be coming really soon. Mines. Ouch! No, that wasn't mines, a torpedo from the rear. Let's stop the flooding. Manually control the 40 mils, even if they're HTTF, they'll still do damage. There we go. Uh, yeah. I'll just coast out of the cap because I don't have any propulsion. Flooding was not all critical. Propulsion's back to some extent. Clams. Uh, that's a Churchill, even. Okay. What's the biggest of threats? Why am I firing TF? That is useless. I think it's because I swapped to my 40 mils in it. And game over. Yeah. Good match. A very good match. No cameras though, but it should be pretty decent progress, yeah. The, the cost of unlocking camos really goes up fast for destroyers. But it's still it's something you just passively unlock by playing the destroyer, so it's fine. Mm. I'm thinking if I should just like rotate the nations every single match. 
think I might actually. Because like I, I haven't done any of the gamos yet for all the other nations, just for Japan a few. And I think let me actually check. Let me just unequip the ones I'm not gonna actually be working towards. Uh Yukumo might be one. Akazuki can go as well. What's the other one I had? Yukumo, Hatsuhara, and Hayanami. I'll just put those in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll rotate among the nations then. Let me just do... Hayanami in here. There it is. That one, two favorites, and... Not that one, this one. Then the Italians, we have Turbini and Aquila. So that is this one and this one. And for Turbini. Why does, uh, no, why does the Fletcher have it? It's a post-war destroyer, well, technically a post-war destroyer. Should have been a... There we go. I think I'll start off with Aquila. Because Aquila is definitely the most awkward to play of the two. Have torpedo mode, I do. Let's just yeet that away because nobody likes torpedo mode. Fiji is a good map. Quite like Fiji. I like fighting over the sea area of Fiji, then capturing it, go to B, and then fighting this area. Not sure if I can do that with Aquila, however. The Soldati are like just a 4 threes, right, for Italy? It's been a while since I actually played them and I remember quite liking them. They're a bit... You just can't be as aggressive with them as you can with other destroyers. Like I, I quite like sitting at like 5-6 kilometers with him, just sniping people. Lots and lots of coastal players. I think it's a fall down here. There's an old target, so where are my second script of AP? That's fine. Ah, yeah, because on this ship you actually want to use a manual fire uh, secondaries. Yeah, I caught it, Jere, Jere. Those tours are fine in my experience. They're, they're not. Look, at 4 3 at their own BR, they're perfectly fine. It's just like the difference between a 4 3 and a 4 7 destroyer is very big in, in terms of capability. But when I think of 4 7 destroyer, I think of Tashkent, I think of the summoners and gearing. And those things are just. Beast. Actually, there aren't that many 4 7s left anymore. All the British 4 7s are 4 3 now, aren't they? The Japanese has some four sevens left. Akazuki. Germans have two. The Russians have Tashkent. British don't have. Do the British have any four seven? Oh yeah, they have the Daring. And the battles? No, I think they're four three as well.
Yeah. The victory is near. The difference in, in like speed between Verrazzano and the other destroyer is quite harsh. So why why? Why would you even start shooting at me? I wasn't really expecting to be fighting a lot of ghosts, so I probably should have did. Never mind. Sap Sap does the job just fine. Sap does the job just fine. Are there battles for Sam? Okay. For some reason I was thinking they were for three. Oh yeah, the, the the AP on the on the Italian shell like 120s is slapped on how powerful that is. I get the feeling this will be a very quick battle. Of Frunzo, by the looks of it. survivable. I remember the battles having a very vulnerable front time of storage as well. If anything, that's the way I all I deal with the Cadiz zombies. Just Amorak the front of Amoraks. Oh yeah, the close tur the close turrets do help, I guess. Lost my bridge for a few seconds. Ooh, took out one of my guns. And that was the Spurge, and I don't know what that was. I'm being bullied. I do need a fire extinguished face up. Yep, he's already pretty much dead. Dead. To help of a teammate. Uh, bridge is out, but that's fine. I wasn't really planning on going anywhere. Yeah, I. I if I knew I was going to be fighting this many coastal vessels, I would have taken HE. Because Sap is just overpanning. Luckily, this thing has decent secondaries. I say, I just spliced the target. Or straddled it. Deal. Something on B. Right there. Enemy Frenzy doesn't seem to be much of a threat in the moment. Yeah, I... The, the reason I don't bring HG is because it's just... The muscle velocity on that shell is like, just terrible, comically terrible. 88s are actually quite dangerous. Mm, I do have torpedoes. Shall we just torpedo run that 88 barge? If I can keep the cap. I don't know how many of you actually keep note of the patch notes and stuff, but or just keep in, in touch of all the bugs in Naval. But there was a bug for a whole while that when you activate the torpedo lead indicator, right, you couldn't deactivate it. And the funny thing is, they fixed that, and at the same time broke torpedoes. Because now you can, you automatically switch between launchers depending on where you're looking. But it doesn't work so well when you you have like three separate launchers all able to look at the same target at the same time. So that automatic switching was just terrible. You just like launch three or four torpedoes when you press the button once or twice. 
I think I saw something in the air there for a second. That's a 40 Heavy is around the corner in front of me, right? Yeah, we're torpedoing him. Gabiano is, is fine. Not the best in my opinion, but uh, I've, I've had some fun with it. My goal in this match is just beat this as a 40. You are not safe in your spawn, my friend. These are slow-ish torpedoes, however. But I think I should be fine. So let's launch one. See if he panics. Let's keep it in closer. Preparation to launch a second. Oh. Okay. That happened. And let's launch a second in case that torpedo just goes between his two pontoons like it just did. That one should hit though. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. 4,000 naval damage. That's not quite... Oh, I don't need that much for Aquila. And even less for Turbine, fine. But we said we were going to keep rotating. I'm not going to keep pinning these. I can only pin 20 anyways. And it's two per ship. But I might as well, right? Mm. Not well. Do I actually have a well burn? I completely forgot. I don't. Okay, good. Uh, Litchfield. And where's the oh, Parker? There she is. And off we go. Yeah, I've past few weeks I've been grinding my American tree. I'm still close to finishing it. Well, 330,000 or POA, but still, that's close to my book with like five more ships to spade, anyways. And once I have Arizona, I'll have the big three navies completely unlocked. Their blue water side, at least. Uh, was it Barker that already had? Yes, Barker already had a bit of progress towards her camera, so I'll play Barker first. It's the one with the 20 mils, right? Yes. All hands to battle station. Engine, flank speed. Let's zoom the map out a bit, so I can see what I'm doing. MZ1, P2, those are... MZ1 is 3-0, right? Or 3-3. PJ2 is 3 3 at least. Hell, Hell, Ooh, possible down there again. I'm having that streamer luck with my matchmaking. You know. Technically, I should be going towards A. We actually capture it for my team. But I genuinely don't care. Also, let's disable that because I don't want to be in control of the 76. Look, if I wanted to win this match, right? And knowing that this is the matchmaking, I should have spawned here and gone to A to win this match, but I do not care about winning. I think I'll fight around C and not B. What do we have out there? That 
Here's some AI. HE. Because you can hold big boots. Ooh, what's that? R301. That's a bit. With the R boys, you don't really want to push up aggressively because you just can't really do much. You can't evade. You're a very big target as well in his orbits. Yep. If we get the French Blue Water Tree right, I'm actually not all that familiar with the French Navy. Other than the fact that they have these fun quad turret battleships. Their destroyers are fast as hell. Um, or they're, they're like big destroyers. And their cruisers are all right, I think. Like, you, you, I can only really judge what they're going to be when I actually see them, when I see their internal layouts and stuff. But I'm hoping we see one of the quad turret um, battleships, like Dunkirk would be a fun one to see on release. Although I don't remember what Dunkirk's caliber was, good like gun caliber. I don't think it was 15 inch like the Jean Bart, was it? I think it, I think it was 12 inch, but I don't know. I don't remember. Hello there, Mag. Yes. I actually use this this chat overlay for quite a while now. Also I do see the torpedoes. I've used this one quite for quite a while and it just really three thirties. Is that that is thirteen inch then, right? Yeah, three thirty is thirteen inch. Yeah, that, that, I think Dunkirk would be a really interesting to ship if we were to see it on, on launch. Also, the thing is, you have to take into account, right, with the introduction of new tech trees, remember that they're in, like, closed testing for one update. But I am for sure, if the French Navy comes, going to get myself the premium pack to get the early access, so don't worry about that. And I'm not... Well, depending on what tasks they might give it, I'm not going to do the tasks for to get into it, get into the tree. And it also depends on the premium, I guess. So many boats. So many victims. It seems 4-inch doesn't quite... Oop. Yeah. I quite, didn't quite see him type anything. Unstunned. Yeah, I think genuinely Dunkirk would be a, a very interesting and actually pretty good French top tier battleship to just get off the bat. Um, the whole break thing for. I don't know. I don't know what to think of it really. If you should be able to just like one shot most destroyers. Also, that's an ammo rack, so that's like what that. Just die like that. Like four inch is still not quite potent enough, apparently. One shot people. All these barges. 
They took up my bridge now. I think I might actually just want to get away because these people are being annoying. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. The fact that they changed it so that DDs can whole break PTs again. Oh, the Nelson class I want to have. Um, I've, I've, the things I've already unlocked all British Blue Water vessels, so I'm primed to get it if they ever introduce it. Or well, not ever, when they introduce it. Yep, I'm, I'm, I don't really know what to think about this thing, the fact that normal destroyers can hold break PT, but it's like, from the destroyer standpoint, of course, it's, it's much nicer because aiming at close range against a small target can be a bit finicky, but at the same time, you let a PT boat get that close to you, you should have a bit of a hard time. And like, to most torpedoes aren't even one-shot kills anymore. Well, I think we're about to find out if the Peter wants to kill anymore or not. Um, take them on the bow if I can. I have depth charges equipped. I do not. Take them on the bow. We're fine. Like, see? Like, that, that guy managed to get close enough to me because I was distracted. Did he kill me? No. Because he w didn't actually do it the right way. He should have launched the Peter on my side. Guns can't quite depress because of... Flooding. There's more PT boats, I am aware. Uh, that guy doesn't have torpedoes, this guy doesn't have torpedoes, but he's annoying. Bridge is out, that's also doubly annoying. Can I get my lead indicator to swivel around? Because I'll just launch like a torpedo against. I think that's just an AI boat, but still. Again, I'm, I'm, yeah, the Brit I vaguely remember the Britannia as being just a, like a classical dreadnought type ship. I, again, I'm not too familiar with the French Navy, but even though I really should be, to be honest. Quite an interesting Navy. Is that a mine warning? What am I hearing? Oh, yes, the um, S100 dropped mines, apparently, when passing me. That charges might have been more useful. Like, those two ships, right, for the British Navy, I really want to get. The Nelson class and the Prince of Wales. Hello there, Asheville. I am aware that I'm under attack from a Heinkel 111, but I'll just live with it. I hear the bombs. Let's just touch a little bit. I think he's even more close to me, really. Go on, reload. There we go. That should be both camos on the Barker after this match. Yeah. Well, I'm not entirely sure if submarines would be fun to play. It'd be something different. Fun? Mm. Like, the thing is, you have to think you're playing something with fixed torpedo tubes, although historically you could like angle the torpedoes a bit so they could turn, set them on different courses. But you're basically fixed torpedo tubes, and you're as slow as a battleship. No armor. I'm curious how to see if they actually rework depth charges though for it. Because the depth charge mechanic is pretty basic at the moment. I'll deal with that boat in a bit. That's the boat I'm more worried about. All shells missed. Let's put guns on all because I want my 20 mils firing as well. Okay, 20 mils. Get into the action. go. You're doing the water, but I think... Mm, that's a bit dodgy. 
Yeah, no, we can dodge that. We can dodge that. Back to main guns. Yeah, this, I'm still confusing thing about depth charges in this game, right? You only see them on coastal vessels and destroyers. But the, also, that was a, a very nice flyby, Iron Anchors. The thing about. But the prime targets for submarines in this game would be cruisers and battleships. So it's like, do, do you want to put them at that, at like 6 0 and above, or like 5 0? and above or do you want to put them over the coastal so they can actually I don't know my personal opinion on submarines is that as long as they have a deck gun put them like at the coastal BRs just they play surface who cares but then if you up tier them yourself voluntarily then you can't complain about the gameplay being poor or anything because then you're up tearing it I think it would be one of the better ways to go around it. Also, did I get my camos? No, I was close. Didn't get the camos. Oh well, Germany next. We have a Leopard and T22. I think I'm pretty close for camos for both of them because I did replay T22 recently. Yeah, for my video script writing. Uh, how many more can I fit? Four more. Where's Laboratory? She is. There we go. And Friends will be next. So let's try getting the cameras for T22. Now, the thing is, right? That does not make destroyers more viable, because destroyers have to fight the cruisers. They're not fighting the submarines, they're fighting, they're trying to sink submarines whilst being attacked by cruisers, if you put submarines at 5-0. It, do it doesn't make the destroyers more viable, as it does... I don't know. It's just... That, that's not how it would work in War Thunder. Like, either the ship itself needs, needs an ability to fend off submarines. Or the submarines just need to be at the BR where every ship can f fend them off. Oh yeah, those midget subs. But th th the problem about those is... You only have like two torpedoes, like one or two torpedoes. And you're out. And realistic, that would not be fun. It'd be cool looking. Okay? It'd be fun for cinematics or for events. But in actual games, not as much. That's another thing. Submarines in arcade would be much more lethal. Because torpedo speed is triple, like for the first four kilometers. So if you if you can some and ships are faster and more maneuverable, of course you do get markers, and I wouldn't know how that works for submarines. But if you manage to, in arcade, get a submarine within four kilometers of a target and they have fast torpedoes, those torpedoes are going to hit. Yeah. I think, I genuinely think that submarines could be implemented and work pretty all right, but I don't think they should be at like any higher than five zero. They should not be higher than five zero, just because the cruisers and battleships can't really fight submarines. So genuinely, they shouldn't actually be higher than four zero then. Yeah, yeah, the torpedo gyros homing. I'd rather not. Like, the gyro is fine because you have to kind of set that yourself. But homing is... Mm, I, I don't know. I don't like I don't like thinking about homing torpedoes. 
North Sea is a fun map to have with the destroyer. Can't use my spawn point, but that's fine. Um, what is my secondaries? Let's reduce that a bit and take some TF rounds, just in case. Surprising me high ping. Oh no, I'm just playing the US server, that's fine. Vega is 3-7, but I'm playing 3-7, so 12 is 4-3. That's a bit yikes for a... Oh yeah, like depth again. Depth charges would actually be useful. Mm. I, you could probably noise makers like the the thing with submarine. The thing with a lot of things you can implement in like ship class or whole new mechanics is the counterplay mechanics that could be introduced alongside could make things interesting. Like noise makers, you drag behind your ship if it's like a timed. Like a time consumable like your smoke screen, although that wouldn't be very realistic. Um and nose makers also only work if the torpedo isn't coming from behind you. If it's a home like a noise homing torpedo. Ooh, candid. Big boat. I st the thing is Kaijin seems a bit reluctant to really add new weapon systems and new mechanics for naval but how long has hood been in the game now and where are those damn anti-air rockets that it is armed with the shield i'm not afraid of what is trying okay i did not see that f back off i do not want to sing that courage because i flipped him over I did not see him at all. It's three, isn't it? I'm sorry. That goes a rear gun, that's fine. 15 second repair is not that fine, but well. Ouch. I need to repair, but I'm probably going to lose that middle gun. Yeah, I, I thought as much. The way I just backed up. It's probably going to sail into the map border now, actually. Oh boy. Mm. Another thing that I'm really annoyed about is how they handle the boat planes. Like I said ages ago, oh yes, we'll make all the spare float planes like on the decks of, of ships available eventually. Then they add Fargo, the new ship. That one has the reserve float planes available, no other ships has. They add Fuso without a float plane. Then they add Bioko, which has an E-13 on the, on the catapult, but an F-1M actually launches. Even though the F-1M is supposed to launch from the Fuso. Why the Fuso doesn't have its plane, I don't know. Then there's the fact that the Fargo on the dust server had different aircraft models on the catapults. Actually, quite cool looking float planes, even. Then I think the Crunch that also had a different aircraft model that didn't, eventually didn't get implemented. Bit of a shame. Ouch, I got German destroyed. In both senses. Got slapped by one and I got uh, my rear magazine detonated. The thing is, with, with how Warthner tends to, well, tends to be more historically focused, a battle time is, is more than enough time a submarine could be underwater. But like you'd have to add some like the sonar mechanics or something like that. Yeah, the Seahawk. 
That thing actually looked really cool on the Varg on the dev server. I have an image of it somewhere, but I can't actually show it or share it, really. That won't be enough to get a D22 camo, is it? I need to change this ammo ratio on the Leopard. There's not enough base shoes. Yeah, the nuclear artillery. One of Iowa's 16 inch shells incoming. Well, they're not. The thing is, those aren't big nukes, are they? Oh, I was talking about Fargo, the American six the American light cruiser that's fairly recently added. Had a different float plane model. Hold on. Hold on. Are we still here? Just quickly check. We should still be here. I just saw my connection drop to zero and give me a heart attack. Okay. Yeah, Far got a different float plane model on when it was on the death server. The, as Max said, the Seahawk. I should be looking where I'm going. And I'm just gonna get T-boned by this guy, I guess. Let's look down. Stream, please don't die on me. Oh god damn it. It's coming back, it's coming back. <sighs> My connection is not loving me at the moment. My connection is not loving me. When I'm I'm looking at my OBS window mostly during my stream, I'm just looking at my upload speed going down to zero and it's oh there it goes again. God oh, damn it. Uh, the new German P is that forty seven right? I don't have that chip. I have not played the chip. I hope the connection stays stable. One more shot. Let me just quickly check if my YouTube stream is still running. There it is. Yep. That'll just be some missing frames in the vault, I guess. Ah, cool. Yeah, we'll be fine. I hope. still alive no we aren't really come on 
Yeah, the fact that it only has AP is, is rather rough. I'm trying to remember if I know somebody who recently told me about that 47. I think it's four, yeah, at 47 you see way too many American destroyers, but it just doesn't work. Yeah, well, no, that's good. Oh, yeah, the French post war cruises are very f interesting. Colbert, of course, being the prime candidate for that. Ooh. The thing is, he doesn't have any bombs on him. Oh, he just blew up. K2 is distracted, Ayanami is distracted, and the Lichfield is distracted by the things around C. So we'll just nab ourselves B and A, hopefully. No, don't shoot at 20 miles of the K2. I know it's a frigate, but that 20 miles are not going to do anything against it. 1000 meters? What's 1000 meters away? Let's just keep a close eye out for PT boats. Pan on the base fuse, literally not enough to pan the citadel of a K2, so we'll not even try. by the Swedish Navy. Let me actually just repeat it when the crack is back. You don't drop any frames. Yep. I don't actually know much about the Swedish Navy. I only know like two ships and that's the coastal battleships and the Holland. That's all I know. Like the post-war destroyer and the World War II coastal battleships. That's the only ships I know about Sweden. I generally just don't know enough about them. Probably see a spotting game in, at some point. Yeah. 
other than France, not many other in-game navies really build battleships, other in-game nations. Like, this... I don't recall Sweden making any battleships. Technically, Russia didn't either. Well, top... You know, like late World War II battleships is what I'm thinking of. Again, a fighter, that's not a threat. Oh yeah, the Cold War Swedish stuff could be interesting. But I wonder how they'll actually do that. If they'll just have navies that just skip entire BRs. Technically, the Italians don't have a top tier ship yet. A top BR ship. They're still stuck at 6-3. Hold. Twenties, please. Please, twenties. Please, rotate. Please. 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 Fire. Please. Are those torpedoes? What? what? No, those were 800 kilo bombs from the Italian, right? Using. But he managed to skip bomb them. Was slightly unintentionally, but it will. Yeah, the, the Dutch. That is actually also something like the Dutch cruisers kind of interest me. I don't know too much about other Dutch ships, but the Dutch cruisers definitely interest me. Also namely because I'd be actually be able to pronounce their names somewhat properly. I had Trump. Is Trump is a cruiser, right? I know because World Warship marks it as a um, destroyer, but it's, it is a cruiser. I'm not mistaken. The Trump, the Zeven Provincian. The Zeven Provincian especially I want to see. I did get a camel for T22, lovely. So I can scratch that off the list. Then we go to Russia or Frunze. Yeah. Yeah, like Trump is 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 a cruiser in the same way that the Regolo is a cruiser. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to call those ships cruisers. Well, the thing is, there's like you have destroyer leaders that are clearly like big destroyers, and you have destroyer leaders that are clearly just small cruisers, in my opinion. Like I think, technically speaking, isn't the Tashkent the destroyer leader as well? Yeah, like, but Tashkent is like clearly just a destroyer, a bit bigger. Also, I, th I think that, a, in my in my opinion, Regula and Trump are more small cruisers. Yeah, Moscow too. Could put them in France, I guess, yeah, the Dutch cruisers. Okay. Okay. I... Well, luckily the France is a reserve, so she doesn't get crew locked. 
or whatever the hell that was. The snail works in mysterious ways. You saw me playing a Russian and immediately cancelled me, stopped me. Yeah, the servers haven't been doing too well recently. I've, I've, I've actually had quite a few disconnections the past week. Well, let's hope this time it works. I can work with South Quarken. Quite like the map. Oof. Pardon me. Yep, I can work with this. По местам стоять. Самый полный. Руль лево. I guess so. Mm. You see, here I kind of... Is Yubari supposed... Well, I guess all Japanese light crews are technically supposed to be destroyer leaders, aren't they? I feel a bit weird about Yubari. Ooh, down here. I don't know, it's just, apparently, well, they've been saying that the servers have been DDoSed again last week, so that might have been it. Also, when it actually comes to the update stuff, um, I am, like... 89% certain that the dev server is going to be in two weeks. So the weekend of... Uh, not the 18th, the... Come on, half, 25th. I think the weekend of the 25th of February will have a dev server. I'm pretty sure certain of it. And if we do, you can bet your ass that I'm going to be streaming it. Of course, also be. You know, I'm actually tempted to make videos again about naval dev blogs. Because I really should be making more videos just to get, you know, more fluent in editing, recording stuff. Like a dev blog, usually. Most naval dev blogs aren't all. You can't really say much about a naval dev blog until you actually see the internal layout of a ship, the shell choices. The reload speed, all that stuff. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, it, it takes a while. I know it's like early to mid March is the update release. But I. I think I remember like when it's these when it's these Friday first dev blocks, it's usually like just two weeks and then the first dev server opens. So I'm pretty sure that the dev server is going to be like on the weekend of the 25th. Well, we, we get a fair bit of naval content. Like, last update, sure, we didn't get many ships. But we got the new crew voices, we got... 
camos. Like it wasn't a bad a bit for Nate of the Lost Ark. It just wasn't all that interesting if you if you're a fan of just seeing the trees get bigger. But the ships are quite fun. Yeah, I, I would love to see another top tier battleship again. Get some more um, big boys. It really got bigger. Abruzzi was actually one of the ships our uh, resident Italian man really wanted to see, though, isn't he? That could be it. Ooh, by the way, um, I don't know if you, if you guys actually follow the guy that made that submarine user mission, um, but he's currently making a user mission in the AC-130. I really highly recommend you follow what that guy makes for his project because he makes some interesting vehicles. Now that Clemson's dead anyways. Let's go attack, eh? Oh, yeah, I was talking about the guy that made a submarine user mission. I don't actually know his name off the top of my head because it's quite difficult to pronounce. Uh, for me, at least. But if you know that submarine user mission, try and find the guy again. Follow his work on you. He has a YouTube channel where he regularly actually updates, posts updates on what he works on. And I think his most recent video was him showing off the AT-130 with the flares coming out of it. Pretty good video. Is an actual person. Okay. Um, I'm going to attack A from the front, not from like, the enemy's rear. We seem to be holding C and B just fine. So let's put some pressure on A. Come on. There we go. in front. They are in a riverboat. Yes, I have seen it post, and it's basically, I think, this is a similar situation to Enlisted, where Gaijin isn't doing anything of the development sort, but he'll just publish it. I am actually kind of interested to see what comes of it, although I'm, I'm not expecting too much. But I have seen that, that as I've seen that announcement. Oh, look at Bill. We're doing just fine. Well, as fine as one can be in a Frunze. <sighs> a split second too early, goddammit. There we go. Ooh, the T-55. Hey, T-51. Hey, T-55 is a tank. I'd be surprised if I saw that in the offensive. There, well. Yes, a 40 
always having a field day with my bridge. Yeah, I know, unless it did, um... Isn't it also kind of the other way around? I saw that Gaijin was the one providing the models to enlisted. Like, well, they provide the damage models at least. The vehicle damage models are pretty much just worse than the damage models. Almost to a T. Although well, it's slightly different because different. Mm, there's something different. I actually play a fair bit of enlisted as well when I feel like it. Pretty fun game. Oh, that's really good, shouldn't I? There we go. I think that is at least one of the camos for Frunze. I think I need 14,000 naval damage for the second one. Years on the way. We are not capturing the zone. Why are we not capturing the zone? What is... Ooh, torpedoes just behind me. There it is. That was the guy I sunk earlier, I think, but Punz's guns are horrifically slow to traverse. And we are dead. Time to launch torpedoes at the... As a 40. I am firing him to the right of the lead indicator because I do not expect him to turn away. I expect him to turn in towards the gap. That's another video I was planning to make. I was planning to make a video on like all the special arms like torpedoes, missiles, rockets, depth charges. But then they had to mess around with the way how torpedoes are aimed. Which is now excruciatingly painful. It's, it's, it's with the new torpedo aiming thing, actually I think I can show you the difference. I think they slightly fixed it, but yeah. You see how it's like just changing between the... Between all the torpedo launchers at will? Incredibly annoying. I think they have made it better, but yeah. Like, let's say I want to just launch a spread. Hold on. Let's enable torpedoes again. First of all, if I'm traveling in this direction, I want to fire from the rear launcher first, so that my torpedoes don't overlap. But now, if I want to fire a decent spread, right, and I want to spread on the right hand side. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. Look, look at how horrible that thing looks. Yeah, when the first did it, was, it was nuts. They've tuned the sensitivity a bit by the looks of it. So they're not as sensitive to change. It's still so annoying. And it's a change no one asked for. They just implemented it together with the fix that you couldn't... I can torpedo kill. That you couldn't um, disable the torpedo indicator. So they fixed it and then also implemented this change for no apparent reason. And it made it made my Japanese main heart hurt even more. It's yeah, it selects the closest launcher to your crosshair, is what it does. So of course if by default it selects the frontmost one, like that's launcher number one. But because I want to have a rightward movement for my spread. The middle one gets closer, then the third one gets closer, and then it, it keeps swapping between all of them completely involuntarily. It's just annoying if you want to actually set up a proper spread. So until they fix that, I am not going to do a torpedo video. Because it's, it's just... 
You can't get a proper spread on, on the target. Reliably. Ugh. Voice crack there. The, also, the funny thing, like the bug fix, the the the, the fixes they did at the update, that that small bug fix update was so funny. So they fixed the torpedo thing that you could not like deselect them right, and also broke torpedoes at the same time. They fixed the count the um, oh what is it? the cursor bug, you know where if you're playing in full screen the cursor would just go whoop off your monitor and onto your second monitor. But they only fixed it if you're playing in full screen and not full screen windowed, which is what I was playing in mostly. It's just so funny. The, the two things they fixed, it didn't even really fix. I did get a camo. Perfect. And it was this one. I was so close. So, yeah, what, what I would do then. Let's say, and then you can, oh, you can't, I thought you could, and what happened to my user camo? What happened to my user camo? Oh no, it's just, oh, it's an actual desk, I forgot that it's my actual camo. Uh, yeah, naval camos tend to be dirt cheap, so every now and then I just pick one up, and they, there are, the thing is, these camos, right, are user camos anyways. They select to then put in into the game. The only difference between this and the user camo is the fact that everybody will see this camo. Whereas the user camo only you see. Okay, that's a camo on the Frunze. Then we go to Great Britain with Churchill and Montgomery. Okay. Let's see. It's fairly expensive for what you use. Well, it's not. It's not a reserve anymore, so I guess it is. The reason for that. And then. Where is she? Montgomery. But I can't select them, I can only select 20 at a time. Yeah, most of the camos you see me run during the stream are all user-made camos. Because I, I quite like them. It's just that I want to unlock my camos as well, because why not? I don't really have anything better to do other than maybe grind the Arizona. But um, I'm gonna go mad if I keep playing the Pittsburgh for four hours straight. So let's do Churchill. Yeah, I, there's tight Because, hold on. I, I don't have the only purchase ones. I wish, I wish I had HMS Tiger, believe me. Yeah, now these, hold on. This camo on the Churchill currently, not everybody can see. However, like these user skins, only you can see. These camos, everybody can see. So it's basically like, that's the base layer that everybody sees, and what I select on top of it, I see. Oh, I like the Pittsburgh as well, but I'm going to go mad from the matchmaking at 6 0. Because it's 80% open ocean, 60% of all, both teams are zombies and Helenas, with the occasional player cruise or player battleship in between there. Mind numbingly boring. Mm, so Churchill and Montgomery, Montgomery. I bought Montgomery because it was going to be off sale because they remo removed Churchill from being a reserve. So they removed Montgomery as well, I think. I just bought it as collector's purpose. But we're going for Churchill. Yeah, Garland was a... 
Also, I'm not the only one seeing like the the chat really slowly appear, right? Because I'm seeing it really slowly appear on my stream and in the YouTube chat, and it's weirding me out a bit. Yeah, Garland was one from one of the battle passes. I've I've got Garland myself as well, but I've, I've used it like once or twice. It's just it's it's, it's a G class, but worse. Of course, as premium bonuses to rank two, so it's not that bad. Still. Yeah, I, I preferably, I, I actually prefer 4.0, because in 4.3 you tend to get up there to the Moffat Horde quite a bit. Also, the 4.0 is. I, I, like, I, again, I've been playing the German destroyers recently, going through all of them, like the 4.0s, the 4.3s, and the 4.7s, for a future video that I'm going to get out next week. Like genuinely. And I, I find 4.0 like the most fun BR. Because then you actually have a destroyer that's pretty decent. But the matchmaking is also pretty good. Mediterranean port is not a bad map, although I am playing a Churchill. Why? Oh yeah, I don't have max ammo because I just never fire max ammo. Uh care either that's another thing right on older ships on older ship models it doesn't matter if you take max ammo or like half ammo or anything but on the newer ships like the fargo the alaska the arizona they actually start having these compartment like, like these ammo racks are you know slowly but surely can be filled or emptied that's something to keep an eye on The, the automatic 37s on the German ships are fantastic. That's why, um, spoiler for the video for next week, but Z-15 is my favorite German destroyer, hands down. 4.0, shit tons of those automatic 37s, the good 128s, really, really fun ship. I am not going to repair my engines, because I'm just going to get shredded by the dying army. I want to get into cover first. I did say set 15. Yeah, set 15 is my favorite destroyer. Really fun one. Like, if genuinely, if you ever like, I don't really. I'm not, I feel like not having fun in AL, like, I don't really have a fun ship to play. Z15 can't go wrong. Unless, you, of course, you get ammo racked in the rear, like, one shot out of spawn. But that is a risk you're, you have to be willing to take. It's still shocking how they ever thought that this destroyer would be fine as a reserve. I'll repair the engines. Or all the transmissions. Only one of the two was ha damaged heavily enough for me to actually repair. Ooh, big boats. Seventy six on Kenneth has a ready rack. I'll try and hit it. Isn't Balfos like also like unironically the worst five seven premium? It's really much Like 
You see Belfast zombies every now and then as well, and they're just so fragile. It's just shocking how fragile that ship is. Because there's like two or three crew compartments right below the bridge. Oh, easy to knock out. The thing is, at one point I will have to get myself a Belfast just so I can make a review with IRL footage from the Belfast. And I'm not gonna enjoy that experience, I already know. Yeah, she... yeah. That's, that's a distinction you do have to make sometimes because people always say, oh, this is trash or it's good. It's not always fair to say that of a ship. It's also one of my pet peeves actually when I hear people talking about X ship like oh this ship is good, that ship is trash and n never anything in between. Like actually I recently when I was looking at the German destroyers again looking at the 4.3 ones I was looking this anti-air isn't all that good but when you look at all the other 4.3 destroyers it's an the anti-air of the German fortress is actually pretty alright. It's just the Americans are just better at almost everything, destroyer-wise. Although... That can be argued. L the thing is, Liverpool, I loved that ship when I unlocked it and grinded it, but that's been a while now, like, I want to say a year and a half. I loved Liverpool. Like, back then I was actually grinding through the British tree as well, through all the cruisers. And those sections guns, when you get them close, they're surprisingly hard-hitting. T-22 is nice. It is not the nicest when it comes to German destroyers. If anything, I think the Leopard is actually better as a 3.7. Uh, speaking of which, my nemesis. Where is the lead indicator? It is turning in. I want to spread around there. And let's hope that it actually hits. Short. Bridge is knocked out. Leopard, you can Amorak? I'm not sure. I remember that correctly. Can I Amorak it with a Churchill? That is the question. No, go for the engine instead. But guns out. He's gonna get torpedoed either by me or by him, that's for sure. How do you almost miss a destroyer at that range, my man? Please. My torpedoes are way far out. Um, I have normal depth charge throwers as well. The thing is, if he's gonna torpedo me, I'm toast. Because I do not have the mobility to dodge at the moment. And those torpedoes look prime and ready. Why is he not launching torpedoes? I can see them in the tubes. Actually, the front one is empty. My man, you, you can't you cannot let me win this fight. Okay, those are the torpedoes, but he's dead as well. I should have yeah, I should have used the MGs, but uh bit too stubborn. The thing is I think one of my future streams I should be playing the spay because I do want to get my British coastals done as well. I only need two more ships, the frigates. And they look really fun. Why is there just a guy right there? Why is he launching torpedoes in our spawn? Like, hello? That front gun is not cooperating. Um, I think it's a bit better. Like, a single gun is not enough to reliably get any kind of detonations. This shit, man, is so 
bad. Come on. Break that fuel tank, please. Or the Mitsuki. Kill him. Omer, Yubari. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting Yubari is actually a 4 3 now. That means it still wasn't a full up tier, but. Mm. Not that bad of a full up tier. Yep. I saw that one coming. Your bar got torpedoed. Shame on you. Japanese ship getting torpedoed. How dare you? Alright, now we've got bombed as well. That's more in line with Japanese ships. Dying to aircraft. That's a sunken ship. Okay, adventurous too. My man, you're a dive bomber. What are you doing on the deck? Let's get those 20s in the action, shall we? He's already lost his vertical stabilizer. Pilot snipe, and nice. M802, the bane of every coastal player. That's comically undershot. I think it just might have been dispersion. That would have been dispersion. Why is nobody capturing Bravo? Another bomber incoming. I think I might just want to. Ra like rake the deck of the damage or two with what is it with Stuka's level bombing excuse me what why, why are you taking the quintessential dive bomber and level bombing with it at low altitude what is this I think the one thing a German main would know is that a Stuka is a dive bomber, right? I will say, dive bombing without a bomb site isn't easy. It really isn't easy, and level bombing at low altitude is much easier to get a bomb on target. Yo, it's, it's not it's not a safe path at this BR. Should be firing HE to like knock out the main guns and kill the crew that way. Ooh boy, okay, that's that was lucky. No torpedo warning because realistic battles. That's also a thing for submarines in realistic battles. If you don't know they're there, if you don't expect torpedoes, you're you're gonna have to keep an eye out. Hello there Clemson. Can I torpedo you? Uh, let's launch two. Keep the last one for real emergencies. Damage the engines a bit. Keep it slower, but those torpedoes look good. Really good. I'm being rammed, but I don't mind. There we go, torpedo kill. Why are you still going forward and not slowing down? I from Noble. Please, I need to actually go forward. Thank you. Mm, T22. That is 
annoying because he has multiple fuel tanks protecting his engines. And I like going for engines. Walker missing all torpedoes because that's not the angle you want to launch torpedoes at. Got one on the bow. That'll slow him down a bit. Let's fire HG into the turrets. Keep him a bit occupied. Torpedo ready. Where is my lead indicator? There it is. Clemson seems to be burning in the engine, so he's probably not going to be evading all that well. Um, I'll give it a good 80%. Mm. It seems to be accelerating the Clemson. Give it a 50% chance of hitting. Mm, it's a miss. Ooh, but barely. It was a near miss from the torpedo. Didn't think he was accelerating that, I thought his engines were burning. Apparently not. Could make a burn though, I guess. If I can actually hit where I want to hit. T22 ahead of me is Punk, that's good. A few more good shell placements to sink this Clemson. One more to really seal the deal. There we go. Target in front, another T22. Torpedoes in the water against me, but that's fine. Okay, just turn around. I'm gonna use some MGs. Maybe knock out his turrets. Else, the main gun rotates. It's still rotating. We just miss. The only time you can really guarantee a torpedo hit if you're like crossing the T of a ship is if you have many torpedoes. And you need to time them a bit. You need to almost cross drop an enemy if you're crossing their T. Capping. More torpedoes. Always a good thing if you're dueling a destroyer to watch out, like just look at his torpedo tubes. I need to dodge it this way to make sure I don't hit the torpedoes. He should be sinking, or pretty close to. There we go. Ideally, I'd have another torpedo reloaded soon, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So this is just going to be a gun duel of the Iron Army. Which, in competent hands, should wipe the floor of me in gunpower. Although he seems to be getting shot from multiple angles. And his hands do not seem to be all that competent, to be honest. But oh well, it's a 4.0 destroyer, what else can you expect from it? Also, his bridge is knocked out, so he can't really get his guns on target the way he'd want to, or maneuver the way he'd want to. One torpedo reloaded, I'm gonna go back to B. Prefer to actually have some more shells loaded, but the 50 is fine. Not that I expand them at all at a higher rate. Clemson, don't really care about Clemson's too much. Enemy 
I reddened his magazine with an almost direct hit, okay. I mean, I guess, yeah, in my hands, the, the Churchill is, is more than adequate of a destroyer at this PR, clearly. I am, I am absolutely dominating in the worst, in obviously the best reserve destroyer ever made. I am the statistical proof that this ship should not have been removed, that Vega should not, never have replaced it. That Clemson, to me, seems like he wants to do torpedo run. As the line intersects him. His torpedoes are out, I think. Yep, he launched the torpedo as well. I turn because I saw the torpedo incoming. He is just going in a straight line and he'll eat the torpedo right to the engine room. Or not. Transmission room. Oh, fine. See, this. Ooh, was there Ooh, more torpedoes? More torpedoes I didn't watch. See, this is why I like playing destroyers more. These close in brawls. Also, the fact that you know, most people here aren't, you know, people that know your every, every position of every magazine and every ship they can possibly face, or are zombies. Mm, I shouldn't be repairing two things at once, but the fires are not critical. More surface fires. This guy is in a world of hurt and should be sinking now. With 8% crew, but I'm going to put one more in to seal the deal. If I can hit him. It seems like he's going down. Yeah, he's going down. I can now ignore him. I should have been going for B, but... That's a friendly Stuka. Time to engage this Clemson. Enemy is decapping C. Yep. I'm back, going back to see them, as I'm closer to it. I do not think this Clemson is much of a threat. Let's just try and finish him off a bit. Enemy aircraft, Luca. Ooh, torpedo! That's gonna miss. What did it come from? It was that Clemson like ages ago, that was a pretty good torpedo. Another thing I think about the way people use torpedoes, you shouldn't be afraid to just launch them, even if you're not going to hit anything. Because you know what they say, you miss every shot you don't take. Yep, that Stuka has wisely decided to not mess with an anti-air destroyer. And he's capturing A in a destroyer, that's not fun. Is C under any immediate threat? Not really. But we have no defenders other than myself. Okay. Oh, I ignored it much. Uh. And let's go for the caps. Again, ideally, I'd wait around and reload a torpedo, but we can't, really. We have to capture the points. Corsair with no bombs, what is your plan? 50 color destroyer, that's, uh, that's a solid plan, my man. Incredibly solid plan. This is not pre new power. The, the destroyers no longer have the whole. Like the simple DM. It won't, that doesn't work anymore. Rosamacha is shooting me. I'm gonna deploy smoke screen so he'll lose his lock and decides to go for a different target. That doesn't mean I have to keep an official. He's not even. like He's nowhere near hitting me, but still. I don't want him shooting me. Because frigate players, although the Rotsamacha is a premium, isn't it? But in general, frigate players are probably the most dangerous people you'll see at around this BR. Because they've grinded... They're basically at top tier for coastal. 
Those are top tier players. That's mm. damage control. Suspicion. Can be very dangerous players. That's good, that was the destroyer's around A, the enemy destroyer around A. Got torpedoed to death. Very good for our team. That Rosa Match is, is not hitting me. I can just tell that he's not gonna hit me. Yep, yeah, still not. What bomber is that? A G21. Not a bad choice. So it's too low BR. Also, I I the same thing. I have the same thing with my Italians. I have a lot of Italian ships, but none of their aircraft. So I never really have any good cast options for them. We're not that critically damaged. This is, this is going to be my fourth capture point. <laughs> Clearly Churchill is the worst, worst reserve. I have proven it to you with video evidence. If anybody ever tells you that the Churchill is the worst reserve in game, just show them this video, this stream. Or the VOD of it. If it isn't too corrupted afterwards. Patrol vessel had 3,000 meters, that should be... Hello, German destroyer. Is that for... Is that 22? You're scary, but I'll just stay like this. And your base view shouldn't be able to do much to me. There we go. And what we do now is we just... Drop the smoke. Stay angled. And don't repair anything. At all. Everything up. Oh, game's over. Yeah, that was a surprisingly good match in the turtle. We've got through all naval nations, if I'm not wrong. And we're already going for two hours. Didn't get the camo, but that was kind of to be expected. Like halfway to it. So, back to Japan. Yes, yeah, six naval nations. Where we have Hatsuharu. The 4.3 lineup. Hatsuharu being the main one for It was a few seconds without connection again, for some reason. Let's just see what everything's like. Yeah, that's why that exactly. Like that's what that's why they removed the church. It was too overpowered. Ooh, I like fog battles. Hey, we got, we started this stream on this map of Hatsuharu. Well, did we? Yeah, it was Hatsuharu on this map as well. Let's just do the same thing. I really like this map. I think this this is a good map. And the fog, always nice to see. Owens 4 0, Moffat 5 0, damn. But the Moffats don't go to B, so I'll go to B. Mm, I think I'm fast enough to cut in front of the Alwyn. 
Let's get back up to speed again. Yeah, I should be fast enough to cut in front of the other one. Okay, some Moffats. So let's just keep those torpedoes spare. Just in case we need them. for all the way over there. It being 5-0 also means that we have very little chance of actually encountering PT boats, unlike earlier this stream, like two hours ago. No coastals by the looks of it. That's a bit sad. We have a coastal. Looks like a late spawn. Stealing my damn cap. Not that I really care because I've got all of these Japanese ships spaded anyways. And I need naval damage for the camos. Score. What I'm going to try and do is, you can see under the minimap, I'm going to sit around the enemy spawn and just launch torpedoes in this direction to maybe hit a few people. I've got the... yeah, they're fast, okay. Seven kilometers, that, that's more than enough range. Just to like cross an entire channel. So let's see if we can torpedo some people. I don't, re I don't want to go like directly into the enemy spawn because that's just asking to get torpedoed by a PT boat spawn. And that guy's going behind the ice. I don't think I'm quite fast enough to really do anything with my torpedoes here, though. Well, I can always flank around. Chiku, ooh, a rare and dangerous sight. The LS3 is at least feeling adventurous. Let's follow his lead. I'm gonna enable it so I can see the torpedo lead indicator. They were near fast enough for me to launch a spread out. There's something right there, but he's yeah, out of angle. I am and he is going to like it. I kind of want to try and surprise him with a launch. So let's see if he pushes up or not, but it doesn't really seem like it. Oh well, I can't take Chikago with just the guns as well. Just gonna put my guns on all targets. Just to give him some more headaches to work with. 
And we'll just launch a full 9 torpedo spread at them. As 3 is launching torpedoes at Chicago. They're not gonna be fast enough, pal. Tashkent or something behind it, some Russian destroyer. Launching torpedoes. Launch them ahead because he's gonna accelerate now. Launch them there in case he turns around. One third is knocked out, I can ignore it. That is a. some Russian destroyer, I don't really care to remember the name of. Chica goes down. I do not really care to fight the Russian destroyer, but I think we've dealt with the destroyer on sea. So I'm gonna torpedo the Russian destroyer. Let's first try and knock out his bridge. So he cannot evade, for like a few seconds at least. And we'll launch... Like that. That'll be a spread that I think will hit. Again, he doesn't have a bridge, unless he started slowing down before I hit his bridge. He is going to eat some torpedoes. Oop. He's turning. Let's knock out the bridge again. Turning away to keep our surface as minimum as possible. Enemy torpedo bomber got Nalwin, impressive. And the TPD torpedo hit. He is going down. I'd love to get the finishing blow. There we go. Now what we do is we hightail it out of here and activate the smoke screen. God, my bridge got torn apart. Use the ice caps maybe as cover. I'm very slow though because of the damage I've taken. And we should be good now. Yeah. Good, a violent little brawl. Exactly how I like it. Like, launching a spread of 9 torpedoes does is the fact that he just can't dodge. Unless he's looking, can find a gap in between torpedoes, he just cannot dodge. He cannot turn away to, like, avoid a torpedo. That's why if, if you think you're confident enough in hitting something with a torpedo spread, just launch a full spread at it. Don't be conservative of him. I don't even think that torpedoes are all that expensive to reload in the hangar anyways. But I'm gonna try and get some of them back in the capture point. Because I'll, I'll reload three at a time. It's not that slow, so I'll just reload the torpedoes a bit. They are the prime weapon for these destroyers and Neptune anyways. So I just stay behind this little outcropping. Ayanami, that's probably the Chikibu I torpedoed. He's behind the island, so he's no longer a threat. I can move up a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like the automatic selection of the torpedo tube, so... It makes it so you can't really keep track of how many torpedoes you have in which tube, in which launcher. Really bad change the implementers for no real reason. Because now I have four torpedoes in the rear launcher, one torpedo in the middle and two in the front one. Not a good way to do it. Is it a K2 being a bit brave? K2s are also like prime torpedo targets. These are fairly slow. 
thing is, they those 120s shouldn't underestimate them, even though they only fire HE. It's pretty good HE that those things fire. Yeah, it's just, as as a Japanese main, I do not like the torpedo thing they did. Don't. I'm glad they fixed the, the fixed the fact that I can actually like unselect the launchers now. It's and I, to a certain extent, I can understand where they're coming from with the change as well, because it could be useful. It could be really handy. It isn't it? it it's handy on ships that have one launcher on either side of the ship, and that's it. That's like a select amount of cruisers, and that's it. Like most destroyers don't do well with it. Quite a lot of cruisers don't actually have any benefit from it either. Not a good change. I think, yeah, I have enough torpedoes again to do some shenanigans. So let's go to... Just... I, mm, I should actually wait for re one more reload. I'm gonna be out of the cap before I can uh, reload them. Yep. Oh well. Let's repair those 40 mils because they are my... Ooh. The torpedo tube has been broken. <laughs> It's quite impressive how much visual damage there is on this model. There's a cruiser around somewhere. Tributes are fixed. I'm gonna... I'm not gonna go all the way up north. I'm gonna just slip in between these rocks. These, these glaciers are... Ice caps, whatever the hell they are. Mm, just out of, like, you know, out of fire from the K2 because I can't actually deal damage to the K2. Unless, of course, I torpedo him. Which is the plan. I know, I've just been dealt with over there, that's good. Bit of a lackluster map match, but we got an exciting few minutes at least with those torpedo runs. And we still got a victory. Not gonna complain about it. My ready racks are apparently empty. Yeah, the tickets are gonna bleed out before I actually see this K2 again. Set 15 torpedo to Moskva. And the K2 has been sunk. There we go. I think I'm only going to do two more matches. This is getting quite late. And uh, next week I'll do my stream a bit early like I usually do. Just had a bit of a long day today. So I okay. So who are we going to play? We are actually close to a few camos, aren't we? So the Barker we're pretty close to. D22 we're pretty close to. Bunze Churchill, not really. Bunze we're incredibly close to. Leopard. I think... Let's play the Germans and Barker. 
will be the last two matches. Yeah, so Leopard with maybe T22 as well. But I want to do Leopard mainly. And then Barker. No, I'm not, I'm not leaving yet. I'm just going to play two more matches. That's what I feel like I still have energy for. I just at, at the beginning of the stream, I said I had a wisdom tooth removed yesterday morning. And that's a bit of a... Still a bit of an ache. But at least I'm excited for the coming two weeks, or the coming few weeks, with Death Season in full swing again. Maybe some exciting boats will be announced. Or some other exciting stuff. And I should be free at least for the first Death Server to stream it. If I'm correct at thinking it's going to be on the weekend of the 25th. Black Sea Port is not my favorite in the Destroyer. Yeah. Going to do the leopard. I do hope that those rumors of French Navy are actually true this time around. I think it's been like three or four patches that people have said, oh, we'll get the French Navy this time. But I hope it turns out to be true this time because it's would be fun to have a new, completely new naval tree to get, get into. I've also been thinking... I made a post a while ago, I think last week. Just last week. I want to try and think of a video I could make on a weekly basis. Like, my reviews and my tutorials, quote-unquote, aren't really... They take quite a while for me to write and to make properly. I want to, f I want to find a sort a kind of video I could make every week. Just to upload more frequently. Because if I if I do ever make it into being a CC, that would, would help me. Because CCs get all the new vehicles on death servers for free. They get... A certain amount of golden eagles per month, I think, as well. They got they got a lot of in-game perks. Yeah, the the Italian cruisers are quite fun. Not the light cruisers. I'm I haven't played the five seven light cruisers yet. I've only played the five zero one. I'm not a fan of it because it has an extremely long reload. Um, yeah, the heavy cruisers are fine. Trento, Zara, and Apollo. Fine cruisers. It's just that there's nothing really to grind towards for Italy. You have the, the cruisers, are fun ships. But then you have the battleships that are just meh. Although the Italian coastal is definitely worth it. Like, I think Italian and Japanese coastal are probably the 
best coastal trees to get through. With Japan having a fairly good BR like progression, I think. Like the painful BRs for coastal is 3.0 and above. Or like even 2.3 and above. Japan literally only has PT boats until 2.3 and has 133 PT boats is actually really good. And then nothing but frigates. Was Italy a bit rougher, but that is so worth it. Just blasting something out of the sky from 10 kilometers away of those missiles is so much fun. Yeah, I've heard good things about the Italian 5.7 light cruisers. I never really played them myself though, and I really should. But they're like all stock still, so they don't have the AP, it's just... Eh. Getting around to is really. This Moscow is really slowing down. Got an enemy PG2 apparently around C. Italian AP is, is surprisingly good. I've noticed that with their heavy crews, they really hit hard. What is an MPK 161 doing over there? Oh, so the PG, PG2 is already sunk, so now it's a PG15. And there goes a hull break. Yeah, I never really had much of a problem with the Italian destroyers. With their playstyle and stuff. I've heard people not like them though. They're only really good at, at hitting like engines, they're not good at doing crew compartment damage. Just over. It's gonna hit the ship. Yep. Why Navy guy? Playing the Japanese. Being up tiered. That's a new one, who's that? Okay, that's not how you play that shit. That new one, the, the battle pass one, looks fun. I've test sailed it, the rockets are incredibly inaccurate, so it just defeats the entire purpose, really. I've heard somebody say that the rockets on that new um, Russian battle pass bows have like different velocity, like quote unquote muzzle velocities every time they launch. They're incredibly inconsistent. I do not care about the rear gun anyways, I was not using it. Let's so try and see, but it's fine. Got a good amount of naval damage. Already. There we go. And that's him out of spawns. Ooh, Alwyn. That was actually pretty dangerous. Cheat still to knock out his front turrets. That was a delayed hit. Friendly plane.
What did it just blow over the ship? Come on. I think he's bowing so I can't actually hit his engines. He's just a main damage dealer. If he's not gonna show me broadside, I'll just get on his broadside. Anyways, because my guns don't have the velocity to really limp over the bit of the land. Oh, he's at 5% already. He should be going down pretty soon. Show me your engines. I can hit them. Oop. There he goes. Russian and Ognovoy. Just keep on firing. Running a bit low on my base few shells, but it's still fine. Reading in the smoke screen is a good idea. Yeah, that's a bad hit for him. I think one more fell and then just please switch targets. A single ended after this much, anyways. So this will be a good match to end the stream on, I think. Just a few more. Good salvos on this leopard. There we go. Another Alwyn. I'm running low on base shoes. Let's just fire a few HG salvers. I've got all the guns. And start shredding engines. And there we go. That'll be both cameras for the leopard, I think. So yeah. I had some fun with destroyers. Because why not? Uh, let me think of... Oh boy. Let me first defend myself against this 88. Okay, I didn't see him drop a bomb, but I thought that, that would happen. Still, not a bad match in Leopard at all. Let's see if we can get a bit more damage done in C22 for its camos. I was immediately detonated from the rear magazine. Is it our friend in the Ognovoy we shot at earlier? Looks like it. See if you can actually hit this Oknovoy. I'm 
starting to doubt it. Three sixty three with a bomb strapped to it. Sunk. Enemy leopard. Enemy boat. It's there. Come on, can I get this kill before the match ends? Yes, we can. No, nah, but still. Damage is damage. And I think it's going to be the last. Yep. Alrighty. That was a good few matches. In Destroyers. And that will be it for tonight for me. Uh, let's see for the next few, well, for the next week, what I'm planning. Video on German destroyers. Coverage of the naval dev blocks, if any happen. And stream again next Saturday, probably. Maybe do a stream somewhere in the week, if I feel like it. Maybe. But that's no promise. Both effort cameras, perfect. And I'll see you all in the uh, next one. Yeah. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.